Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on transformations. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can perform transformations, identify characteristics of rigid and non-rigid motions, and show how a figure is transformed by a function. Okay, so first thing, transformation is simply a change in position, size, or shape of a figure. Okay, there's uh, two parts of this. There's the pre-image. It's the original figure before the transformation. And then there's the image, the figure after the transformation. So in this case, we started with the pink pre-image and we transformed it into this image here. Okay, there are two types of transformation. There's a rigid transformation. That's a transformation that preserves the size and the shape. Um, so if we started with this little pink square, pink rectangle here, we would have that same size and shape pink rectangle somewhere else in here. That's a rigid transformation. You can do that by sliding, rotating, and flipping. A non-rigid transformation is a transformation that changes the size and or shape. Uh, we can do that by stretching or compressing. This image here is an example of a non-rigid transformation of this pre-image. Okay, let's take a look at some of our um, examples here. Uh, Mr. Scott directs the Marching Cougars, the band at Chavez High School. He uses the coordinate plane to represent the football field. For the band's first show, he arranges the band in a rectangle that is six marchers wide and nine marchers deep. Looks like this. Okay, so we're going to take that and turn that into um, an actual rectangle here. So that's the same, that's the group of marchers here all in a rectangle. Okay, and then we're going to transform it a couple of different times. So here's our first transformation. Here's our second transformation. Um, use your own words to describe transformation one. Okay, so this first transformation, uh, transformation one here, we're going to simply just take that um, transformation. We're just going to slide it down the coordinate grid here. So we just take it from here and it's just going to go straight down here, uh, end up right here, which is that piece there. All right, number two, compare transformation one and transformation two. Uh, how do the two transformations compare? So we can see in transformation one, the size and shape is, um, is kept the same. Okay, so that's gonna make it a rigid transformation. And then from transformation one, so sorry, from this transformation two, so from the pre-image here to the image, um, it's actually the uh, horizontal shape is kept, but then it's stretched vertically because now it's twice as big. Okay, three, model with mathematics. Transformation one is example of rigid motion, which we just talked about. Rigid motion keeps the same distance between the points and are transformed, in this situation, the marchers of the band. Um, the shape and size of the pre-image and the image are the same. How does transformation one affect the distance between any two marchers in the band? So um, it doesn't affect it at all, it stays the same. So basically just stays the same, okay? And then in part B, how does transformation two aff affect the distance between the marchers? Is transformation two a rigid motion? We already talked about that it's not a rigid motion up here. Um, and what it does is it basically, it just, um, doubles the space between them uh, what, vertically. Okay, um, let's move on to uh, a further part of this. Review transformation one here. Each point on in the pre-image is mapped to a point in the image. For this reason, the transformation can be expressed as a function. Complete the table here to show the positions of the four corners of the rectangle when figure A is mapped onto figure B. Okay, so here's figure A. It gives us all the points here. One, 10, top left. It uh, maps onto one, four, top left. Next one, one, two, bottom left is now turned into one, negative four, the bottom left, okay? Six, 10, top right is now at six, four. Okay, and then, oops, six, two, bottom right is now at six, negative four. All right, so it now says for any given point, how does the transformation change the X coordinate and the Y coordinate? So the X coordinate, you can see, stays the exact same. 
Uh, and then the y coordinate, if you'll notice, we go from 10 to 4. So we subtracted 6, 2 to negative 4. We subtracted 6. So everything, all the y coordinates all are moved down 6 or subtracted by 6. Okay, so we can use the notation 110 transforms to 14 to show how a point is transformed. When you use this notation uh, to show how a general point xy is transformed, you're expressing the transformation as a function. Express transformation 1 as a function. So basically, they're asking, what do we do to this to get to this? So we would express that. We always start with our x and our y. And then to transform that, we turn that into the x stays the same. So we just write x again, because the x stays. And then the y is subtracted by 6 each time to get to the new point. So this would be the pre-image, and this here is the image. Okay, And that's our transformation uh, as a function. Okay, uh, i got one last bit. We're going to look at number 5 here. But first, let's take a little uh, comedy break. We thought he was sleeping, and all of a sudden I heard through the monitor, Daddy, I have a joke for your career. <laughs> I got like goosebumps, man. I'm like, wow. So I got to go up there, man. I ran upstairs. This is true. And I sit on the bed. I'm like, man, wow, you got a joke for my, my act, buddy? And he goes, yeah, I, I just thought of it. I was like, whoa. I, I wanted to cry. I was like so touched, you know? I was like, really? Wow, what's the joke, buddy? And he goes, how come dinosaurs don't talk? <laughs> I don't know. How come dinosaurs don't talk? Because they're all dead. <laughs> all right, let's look at the number five here. Um, review transformation two, this one here. Complete the table to show the positions of the four corners of the rectangle when figure B is mapped onto figure C. Okay, so um, we're going to get all the coordinates here. So we started at 1, 4, and then that maps now onto 1, 8. So the next one is at 1, negative 4. Bottom left is now at 1, negative 8. All right, and then... Let's go with, say, we've got 6, 4. Top right is now at 6, 8. And then bottom right is at 6, negative 4. And then now the bottom right is at 6, negative 8. OK. For any given point, how does the transformation change the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Okay, So again, here the x-coordinate has stayed the same, but now the y-coordinate, if you'll notice from here to here, look, it's twice as high here, and it's twice as low here. So the y-coordinate is being doubled. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. OK. <clears throat> And then the last part here, can transformation 2 also be expressed as a function? Explain why or why not, and then write the function if it exists. So yeah, we can write this as a, a, a function because uh, the transform, even though the transformation is non-rigid, each point, or marcher in this case, uh, in the pre-image is mapped to one unique point in the image. Uh, so we can write that as a function, and we would write that as starting with x, and y in the image that maps to our x stays the same and then our y is doubled so we would just write that as 2y okay um, all right that's all there is for the transformation notes if you have any further questions please feel free to ask in class thanks